Now on this second example, on an homogeneous second order ordinary differential equation, you've been told use the method of undetermined coefficients to solve the differential equation d squared y over dx squared minus 4 dy over dx minus 12 of y is equals to 3 exponential 5x. Then the initial conditions will be given when x is 0, y is 18 over 7, and dy over dx is negative 1 over 4, isn't it? So we'll be told to use the method of undetermined coefficients, meaning we want to use the d, the d operator method. So how do we use the d operator method to solve a second order non homogeneous ordinary differential equation? So the first thing we do is what? You let you let y to be u plus, where u is the complementary function and v is the particular integral, isn't it? Meaning the first part of this equation, where there is why we put u, isn't it? Where there is why you put u. So you are going to get d squared u over dx squared minus 4 du over dx minus 12 of u, where there is why you put u to be the first part, isn't it? Then it is plus the second part, where there is where you put V. Because it is U, which is this, then plus V, where there is why we now put V in the same equation, isn't it? Are we together? So where there is why when you put V, you are going to get D squared V over DX squared minus 4 DV over DX minus 12 of V. To be equals to what? We have 3 exponential 5x, so it is going to be 0 plus exponential 5x. Meaning the first equation, whether it's u, we equate to 0 to form a homogeneous equation, isn't it? Yeah. And in the second equation, whether it's v, we equate with the, with the function f of x, isn't it? Are we together? Yeah. So if you equate those two equations, this first equation, which is d squared u over dx squared minus 4 du over dx minus 12 of u is equal to what? 0 for my equation 1, isn't it? Then the second part, which is the one having v, is what? d squared v over dx squared minus 4 dv over dx minus 12 of v, you equate to the second part on the right, isn't it? Yeah. Which is 2, 3 exponential 3 exponential 5x. That forms equation 2. Are we together? So the solution of the first equation, which is homogeneous, gives us the complementary function, isn't it? So we come and get the complementary function is given by equation 1, which is d squared u over dx squared minus 4 <coughs> eu over dx minus 12 of u is equal to 0. So the first equation is homogeneous, isn't it? So how to solve homogeneous? We must introduce the D operator, isn't it? The D? The D operator. So you let D to be equals to B dx, isn't it? So that will imply that D squared will be D squared over dx squared. So we simply do substitution in our complementary equation, isn't it? Are we together? So if you do the substitution, where there is d squared over dx squared, we are going to put d squared, isn't it? So d squared over dx squared is d squared then times how are you, which is there, isn't it? Then it is minus 4 d dx is b then times how are you, which is there. Are we together? Then minus 12 of u to be equal to 0, isn't it? Then you get the auxiliary equation by letting d to be equal to m, isn't it? You let d to be equal to m, meaning where there is d, you now put m to get the auxiliary equation. So we are going to get m, m squared u minus, minus 4m, minus 4m u minus 12 of u is equal to 0. Where there is d, you simply put m, isn't it? Then you can see now u is a common factor. If you factorize u outside, inside you have m squared minus 4m minus 12 of to be equals to so yeah either u is equals to 0 or the second factor is 0 isn't it so this second factor 
which is m squared minus 4m minus 2 root to 0 gives us the auxiliary equation, isn't it? So we need to solve this auxiliary equation. Are we together? You use the quadratic formula. So what is m? When you use quadratic formula, it is minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Then you start substituting, isn't it? Minus b. What is your b? Your b is negative 4. Isn't it? So it is minus negative 4. See, minus negative 4 is positive 4. So that is positive 4 plus or minus square root of b squared. Negative 4 squared is positive 16, isn't it? Are we together? Positive. Then it is minus 4ac, isn't it? So 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 12. That will be negative. Negative 48, isn't it? Yes. So minus negative 48 will be plus 48, isn't it? Yes. Are we together? Yes. Then it is over 2a. a is 1. So it is over 2 times 1, which is just, isn't it? Yes. So there, what do you get to be m? m is equals to the first solution of m. Let me the solutions of m. The first solution 16 plus 48 is 64, isn't it? Yes. Square root of 64 c is 8. Yes. So the first one, when you use addition, 4 plus 8 is 12. 12 divided by 2? The first solution of m is 6, isn't it? Then the next solution of m, when you block addition, you remain with 4 minus 8, isn't it? 4 minus 8 is negative 4 divided by 2? Negative 2. So you found the solutions of m to be 6 and negative 2. So what does that imply? It implies the solutions of m are... The solutions of m are two real, two real numbers. So if the solutions are two real numbers, what is the general solution when you have two real numbers? What is the general solution when you have two real numbers? The general solution when you have two real numbers is a exponential, the first solution x plus b exponential, the second real number x, isn't it? See, that is the general solution when you have two real numbers. Are we together? Yeah. And you can see the first solution of m, m1, is 6, isn't it? Yeah. And the second solution of m, m2, negative 2, is that, isn't it? Are we together? Yes. So what is the general solution? U is? U is equals to? A exponential 6x plus B exponential negative 2. Are we together? The first real number is 6, there. The second real number is negative 2, there. We say when the solutions are real, they are going with the exponential function, isn't it? Yeah. Because there are two, they are now separate. The other one, when it was 1, it was the same exponential that outside, outside shared between the two coefficients, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Now, after getting that, it means we found what? We found u, the complementary function, isn't it? So from there, we want b. Are we together? We now want. So how do we get b? You look at the function there, isn't it? Yeah. So let us go to that next one, the particular integral. Now what do we have here? We have in the particular integral, we have d squared b over dx squared minus 4 dv over dx minus 12 root b is equals to 3 exponential 5. That was this our equation, too, isn't it? Yeah. It is now what we want to use to get the particular integral b. Are we together? Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. So let us now use it to get the particular integral b, isn't it? So what is your choice of b? You have to choose b depending on this function f of x, isn't it? Yeah. So the function 3 is a constant, meaning here we have exponential 5x, isn't it? Yeah. So it means your choice for b is going to be k exponential, where k is the constant, isn't it? Yeah. This constant we are not dealing with when we are choosing, where it is the function we are interested in. Are we together? Yeah. Exponential 5x. So it means our b is going to be k exponential 5. Yeah. Then you check, is exponential 5x in the complementary function? It is not there. Because in the complementary function, we only have exponential 6x 
and exponential negative. Exponential negative 2x. Are we together? So from there, we've now found the choice of v. Then now what do we want? We want the v over the x and d squared v over the x squared. So for us to get the v over the x, we differentiate with respect to x, isn't it? So we differentiate v. Where we have k. If you differentiate exponential 5x, see it remains the way it is. Then if you integrate 5, you differentiate 5x, so you get 5, the inner function, isn't it? So we are going to get 5 exponential 5x, isn't it? Times your constant k, it becomes 5k exponential, if you differentiate that. Are we together? You must differentiate both inner and outer function. Is that okay? If you differentiate the outer function, you get exponential 5x. If you differentiate the inner function, which is 5x, you get 5. So then you express them as a product, isn't it? K is a constant you leave outside when you're doing differentiation, isn't it? Then we go on, we are now differentiating it for the second time. D squared V over dx squared. Are we together? So, 5k is a constant, isn't it? Yeah. So if you leave 5k outside and you differentiate exponential 5x, see it remains exponential 5x. Yeah. Then if you differentiate the inner function 5x, so you get 5. Yeah. So you get 5 exponential 5x, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Times this your 5k, which is outside 5 times 5k, you get 25. Then times your exponential 5x. Are we together? So you see, you found everything. So what do you do? See, you substitute in the equation. Where this d squared v over the x squared, you put this value, which you found to be 25k exponential d squared v over the x squared, you found to be this. You substitute it, isn't it? Then it is minus 4 dv over dx, meaning dv over dx we multiply by negative 4, isn't it? Are we together? See, so we have negative 4 times dv over dx. So negative 4 times dv over dx, dv over dx is this, isn't it? Negative 4 times 5k, you get negative 20 k exponential 5x, isn't it? Are we together? You are done with that. Then we have minus 12 of v, meaning this negative 12 of we multiply by, by, by the value of v, isn't it? Is that okay? So negative 12 times v, what is v? See, this is v. So negative 12 times k exponential 5x, you get negative 12 of k exponential 5x. Then the whole of that is equal to 3? 3 exponential 5x. Are we together, ladies and gentlemen? That is 3 exponential 5x. So after this, you only compare the coefficients of what is on the other side of the equation. Are we together? You see, the, the other side we have exponential 5x. Then you see, see this is exponential 5x here. There is no x here. See this is exponential 5, there is no x. This is exponential 5x, there is no x. Meaning everything here you are going to use now. Are you seeing that? Because exponential 5x can be factorized outside. You remain with, what do you remain with inside? 25k minus, 20k minus, 12k. All these are coefficients of exponential 5x. To be equals to 3 exponential, are you saying it is different from that first example? Yeah. We are only comparing the coefficient of what is on the other side. The other side we have the coefficient of exponential 5x is 3. This side, the coefficient of exponential 5x is the whole of this. We are only comparing the coefficient of what we have on the other side. Are we together? Yeah. Is that understood? Yeah. So what is this? 25k minus 20k minus 12k. 25k minus 20k is? 5k. 5k minus 12k, you get negative? Very good. You get negative 7k. To be equal to? To be equal to 3. Because exponential 5k with exponential 5k is what goes away. You are comparing its coefficient. Are we together? You only compare the coefficient of a function which is on the right hand side of the equation. Are we together? So what do you get to be k? Negative 3 over? Meaning you divide both sides by negative 7, isn't it? Yeah. So k is negative 3 over 7. So that gives you the value of v, the particular integral, isn't it? So v, the particular integral, is what? k exponential v is what? k exponential 5x, isn't it? And what is k? Yeah? Negative 3 over? Negative 3 over 7 exponential 5x. So you found you found k exponential 5x. You simply put the value of k and that gives you v, isn't it? Yeah. So what is your solution? So your solution is y. y is u plus, isn't it? See so y is the complementary function plus the particular integral, isn't it? So what is y? 
latitude. What is u? u is a exponential 6x plus negative 2x plus b plus b is what? Negative 3 over 7 exponential 5x. So you found, this is now what we call the general solution. Are you see that? But they don't need the general solution. They have given you the boundary conditions. Are you seeing that? Yeah. Meaning they don't need this general solution. They need the, the exact solution. You need the particular solution. Because you have the boundary conditions. So what do we have here? Go to your general solution. Your general solution is y is equal to a exponential 6x plus b exponential negative 2x minus 3 over 7 exponential 5x. Remember, this is your general solution. We want to get the particular solution with boundary solution conditions, isn't it? So you start, the first thing, you have dy over dx, isn't it? If you have dy over dx, what do you use? You differentiate y with respect to x. So if you differentiate y with respect to x, you get dy over dx, isn't it? Are we together? So dy over dx will be what? If you differentiate this, a is a constant. If you differentiate exponential 6x, 6 exponential 6x, isn't it? So you are going to have 6a exponential plus b is a constant. If you differentiate exponential negative 2x, you are going to get negative 2 exponential negative 2x. Because you differentiate out an inner function, if you differentiate x, negative 2x, you get negative 2, isn't it? Then the product of inner and outer function, isn't it? So there you are going to get minus 2b exponential negative 2x. Are we together? Ah, yeah. If you differentiate exponential 5x, you get 5 exponential 5x. Ah, yeah. So 5 times this constant, you get negative 15 over 7 exponential 5x. Because 5 times negative 3 over 7, so you get negative 15 over 7. Yeah. Are we together? Good. Then now, we now use these two equations with the given boundary conditions to get the value of a and a and b. Are we together? So start with this first equation. When x is 0, y is 18 over 7. Meaning in this first equation, where there is y, you put 18 over 7. Where there is x, you put 0. So where there is y here, we are going to put 18 over 7, isn't it? To be equal to where there is x here, we are going to put 0. So exponential 0. Anything raised to power 0 is is 1, meaning here we are going to remain with 8, isn't it? Then it is plus exponential 0 is 1, it is plus b. Then it is minus 3 over 7 exponential 0, because x is 0, 0 times x is 0, isn't it? So exponential 0 is, is 1, anything raised to power 0 is 1. Are we together? So what do we have here if you simplify? See, minus 3 over 4 you bring on this side of the equation. Are we together? So what do you end up with? You end up with a plus b is equal to is equal to 3. This is 18 over 7, negative 3 over 7 coming this side, so it becomes 18 over 7 plus 3 over 7. See, that is 21 over 7. See, 21 over 7 is 3. So you remain with a plus b is equal to 3. Are you saying you found the first equation from that? Are we together? Then the second one, when x is 0, dy over dx is negative 1 over negative 1 over 4. Meaning where? Where there is dy over dx, you put what? So the first case here we found a plus b is equal to 3. We now want to look for the second case. Where there is dy over dx, we put negative? Negative 1 over 4. Are we together? So we have negative 1 over 4 is equal to what? Where there is x is 0. Are we together here? So where there is x, you put 0. When x is 0, y is 18 over 7. And also when x is 0, dy over dx is negative 1 over 4. Are we together? Is that okay? Yes. So where there is x, if you put 0, move. Exponential 0, anything less than 0 is 1, isn't it? Yes. Meaning here we are going to remain with 6, 6a. Then here we are going to remain with minus 2, minus 2b. Exponential 0 is, is 1, isn't it? Then exponential 0 is 1, we are going to remain with negative. What are you going to remain with? Negative 15 over 7. So, can you now give me the answer? Negative 15 over 7 coming on this side of the equation, it becomes positive 15 over 7. So, positive 15 over 7 minus 1 over 4, what do you have? 
you now have 6 a minus 2b to be what? Negative 15 over 7 coming, this side is positive 15 over 7, isn't it? So 15 over 7 minus 1 over 4, which was there, you have 23 over 53 over 28. Are we together? Yeah, you just take negative 15 over 7, this side it becomes positive 15 over 7, isn't it? So negative 1 over 4 plus positive 15 over 7, you get 53 over 28, isn't it? So, can you now use any method to solve for the value of A and A and B? Are we together? Use any method to solve for the value of A and B. You can use elimination or substitution. See, substitution, if you want to eliminate, elimination, if you want to eliminate A, meaning you multiply the application by 6, isn't it? So 6 times A, 6A6 plus 6B6 times 3 is 18. So if you subtract the two equations, you would have eliminated, you would have eliminated B, isn't it? So what do you get? 6 minus 6A, 6A minus 6A is 0. Negative 2B minus positive 6B. See, that is negative 2 minus 6. You get negative, negative 8B. Are we together? Negative 2 minus positive 6. See, that is negative 2 minus 6. So you get negative 8B. Then, 53 over 28 minus 18, what do you have? 53 over 28 minus 18. Fifty three over eighteen minus eighteen. Negative negative four fifty one over over twenty eight. So can you now get me the value of B? B. You divide both sides. So say your answer divide by negative eight because you are dividing both sides by negative eight, isn't it? Are we together? So answer divide by negative eight, divide both sides by negative eight, what do you get? 451 over 220. over 220, you found B, isn't it? After getting B, what is A? A plus B is 3, meaning if you take A the other side, if you take B the other side, meaning A is, A plus B is 3, meaning A is 3 minus B, if you take B the other side, isn't it? So what is A? 3 minus B, 3 minus 451 over 224, would you get to be A? 3 minus the value of B, we found B. So 3 minus B, what do you get to be A? 220 over 224. So you found the value of A and B. After getting the value of A and B, you now put back in your general solution, isn't it? You put back the value of A and B in the general solution. So we found the value of B to be that and A we found to be 221 over 224. So what is now our solution? Our solution is y is equal to what? A exponential 6x. But what is A? 221 over 224 exponential 6x. Then it is plus B exponential negative 2x. But what is B? 451 over 224 exponential negative 2x. Then minus 3 over 7 exponential 5x. Are we together? Have you seen you now found the particular solution using the given from the given boundary conditions? Are we together? Is that okay? So that is how to solve a second order non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation given initial conditions with the method of undetermined coefficients.